Hello friends, this video on states of matter part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 17. Now we will learn three different physical properties of liquid that is vapor pressure, surface tension and viscosity. What is vapor pressure? So before we study vapor pressure, let's understand the atmospheric pressure. What is atmospheric pressure? So atmospheric pressure is nothing but force per unit area exerted by the surface on the surface by the weight of air of the surface of the earth. So if you see this is my earth, this is my atmosphere actually so, and there are different layers of atmosphere. Uh, you must have learned troposphere, stratospheres, there are different layers of atmospheres and these layers right they have some mass and they exert some pressure, they exert some pressure on the earth and this pressure is nothing but my atmospheric pressure and I know pressure is nothing but force by area right so these force this force due to the mass of this atmosphere what we do is to make things better e simple we take one square meter of the area so this is my one meter by one meter if you take one square meter of the area in our pressure in our the surface the force exerted in that area by uh, in that area is nothing but a pressure because the denominator will be 1. See, pressure is forced by area. So, if you make area as 1, if you take area as 1, so pressure will be nothing but my force. So, what we do, we will take 1 uh, meter square area and this, in that area, we will find the force exerted and that becomes my pressure. Right? So, atmospheric pressure is nothing but the pressure exerted by the atmosphere of the earth on earth's surface find it what we do is to make things simple we may take area as one find the force exerted there and that is nothing but my pressure correct and that is atmospheric pressure and also note that atmospheric pressure decrease with increase of height for example if you go to some mountain some mountain here what will happen here if you go to mountain here at this point of at this point the pressure exerted is only by this much atmosphere right but if you see if you take a point here the pressure is exerted by this whole atmosphere so since you are in this height the pressure exerted by only this much space it will be less because the mass of air above this point is less if you take one square meter area or something if you take this point this point a this point b let's suppose at point A, the mass of the air above it is more if you take one cross-sectional uh, square area, correct? And that's why if you go up in the mountain, the pressure decreases. Why? Because the air above the above you is less, right? The, the air above you is less, so it exerts less force towards less pressure. Now let's understand the vapor pressure the concept of vapor pressure so let's understand the concept of vapor pressure so we have one jar and it has some water in this and we'll put some fire here we'll heat it up actually some put some fire here we'll heat this so what will happen is when you start and this is closed actually this is closed it's closed so when you start heating this the molecules will come up from this and it will occupy this space Right, the molecules will come, the vapor pressure will come, the vapors will come, occupy the space. So, to start with, what will happen is, see, the rate of evaporation is constant, right? Why? Because you are heating at a constant speed, so you will see that rate of evaporation is constant. But the rate of condensation will vary. Initially, it will be very low because uh, in in first few, uh, I mean, first few seconds or minutes, the vapors or the particles will only go from here to here. Right, and then, and then if you see, since the particles will be all the more here, pushing more particles will be difficult. So, the rate of condensation will increase now. Now, the rate of condensation will increase, and then there will be equilibrium where whatever evaporation, whatever particles go from here to here, similar number of particles come from here to here. We'll show an animation for that. Let's see this. So, this is my thing. So, if you see what happens, the rate of evaporation condensation matches. Let's do it once again. So if you see here, the pressure increase, the increase increase, and then it will reach a 
static value and then it won't increase further. Correct? Let's see once again. So this is my thing. I started heating it up. It, it went up and then if you see the particles are now moving up and down. Right? And the pressure is and the rate of evaporation and condensation is matching now. So what happened here initially the particles only move from here to here. So the, let, suppose this zone is 1 and this zone is 2. Initially the particles move from zone 1 to zone 2 only. At that time my rate of condensation was almost 0. Nil. Because no, no particle is coming from 2 to 1. But as you see as more and more particles goes to zone 2, the zone 2 starts getting saturated. And then some particles starts coming back from 2 to 1 also. And then that is the stage where the rate of condensation starts increasing. Right? And then when you heat it further, there is a state range where the particles coming down is equal to particle coming going up. So the flow of particle from 1 to 2 will be equal to flow of particle from 2 to 1. And that is the state where we say that the rate of condensation is equal to rate of evaporation. Correct? And that is, and that time the pressure exerted is called vapor pressure. And there is a max pressure it can exert because after that, even if you heat further, it won't uh, increase the pressure because the more particles it forms, it will condensate also. Right? So at a given point in time, only a few number of particles will be occupying this empty space and that will create the pressure. And that pressure is called vapor pressure. Let's see the animation once again. The start. So to start with the evaporation rate of evaporation was having some value but the condensation rate was zero. We start heating it, the particles went up, the rate of condensation start increasing because the particles started coming down and then there was state reached where the evaporation and condensation rate was same. And if you see at that point the pressure become constant. Here if you see the pressure is increasing, increasing and then it reached a constant value and after that it doesn't increase. And this pressure is called my vapor pressure. Correct? That's the concept. So let's understand the formal definition of vapor pressure. It's, it's nothing but the pressure exerted by a vapor in the thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phase at a given temperature. So if you see the vapor pressure is temperature dependent, right? If you increase the pressure, temperature, the vapor pressure will be something else. So Vapor pressure is what? It's nothing but the pressure exerted by a vapor in an equilibrium with the condensed state. Right? And please note the vapor pressure of any substance increases non-linearly with temperature. If you increase the temperature, it increases non-linearly. This is found experimentally. So experimentally they have found this. And the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the external pressure, that temperature is called the boiling point. So if my vapor pressure equals the external pressure, the liquid will start boiling. So if you see at one atmospheric pressure, the boiling point is called the normal boiling point. If you see the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, that means at 100 degrees Celsius, at one atmospheric pressure it will start boiling. So normal boiling point of any liquid is nothing but at one atmospheric pressure. We will see that because we see that uh, the boiling point is dependent on what? Temperature and the external pressure. Correct. So if my external pressure is 180 m, whatever boiling, whatever temperature is required to boil a particular fluid, that what temperature is called normal boiling point. Right. If instead of one atmospheric pressure, if you give one bar pressure, then that point is called standard boiling point. Correct. So instead of giving one atmospheric pressure, if you give the one bar pressure, because that's more scientifically uh, accepted value, scientifically accepted value, and this is what you get normally, because this is you have a vessel open in air, you get one atmospheric pressure. So this is what is more accepted value. So this is it requires one bar pressure because. It's, uh, Also, standard boiling point of liquid is slightly lower than normal boiling point. Why? You understand because this value is greater than this value. Standard pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. So, standard boiling point is slightly lower than normal boiling point. So, if you see the normal boiling point of water is 99.6 degrees Celsius, where uh, the standard sorry the standard boiling point is 99.6 degrees Celsius but the normal boiling point is 
100 degree Celsius for what? Right? So you see, this guy is standard is 99.6, but the normal is 100 degree Celsius. And as, as I told, if you go at high altitude, the atmospheric pressure is low. Why? Because above, uh, for example, as I told, if you are in a mountain, so if you have point C, you see a, uh, less uh, force by the atmosphere because you have uh, less layers of atmosphere here. But if you are at point, this point, we have more layer of atmosphere here. So the, at high altitude, the atmospheric pressure is low. Therefore, liquids at high altitude boils easily at low temperature. So maybe the liquid boils at 100 degrees Celsius in, in uh, uh, let's suppose, uh, a plane, then it may boil at 80 degrees Celsius in uh, Himalaya. Why? Because at high altitude, the pressure is less. Since the pressure is less, it boils easily. Let's understand the working of pressure cooker. So the pressure cooker, as the name suggests, pressure is high. And so the boil, it boils at high temperature. You might be thinking, why do we need to boil at high temperature? See, if you have water, you start boiling at normal atmospheric pressure, you start boiling at normal atmospheric pressure. So after at 100 degrees Celsius, you start boiling. Even if you increase the temperature by 200 degrees Celsius, it won't have any impact because it will start converting into vapors. Right? In 100 degrees Celsius, it will start boiling and convert to vapors. Correct? So if you want to boil something at 200 degrees Celsius, that is not possible in, in one atmospheric pressure. Correct? Because in one atmospheric pressure, even if you give 200 degrees Celsius, at 100 degrees Celsius, the moment water molecules reach 100 degrees Celsius, it will convert into vapors. It won't cross that temperature. Correct? The maximum temperature it can have is 100 degrees Celsius. But if you want to boil something at 200 degrees Celsius, how to do that? So in that case, if you increase the pressure, so in that case, if you give 200 degrees Celsius, this will achieve 200 degrees Celsius also. Because the pressure is more, so at, it can withstand 200 degrees Celsius. After 200 degrees Celsius only, it will start converting into papers. So you can boil stuffs. Hope you understand. See, if you are boiling something in open, and if you are giving, let's suppose, 500 degrees Celsius temperature also, at the max temperature water can have is 100 degrees Celsius only. So after that, it converts into papers. But we want something that boils at 300 degrees Celsius. What should we do? So if we close this in a pressure cooker, in a pressure cooker, and we apply, let's suppose, if you give 500 degrees Celsius, and let's suppose the pressure is increased such a way that it can, at the max, go to 400 degrees Celsius, and then only it starts converting into vapors, you are achieving this high temperature. And that's what we want to achieve, right? So we use pressure cooker because the pressure cooker, the pressure is high, so it boils at high temperature. So we want high temperature, we use pressure cooker. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.